Welcome to Juniper Learning Bytes. My name is Zach Gibbs and I am a content developer in education services within Juniper Networks. And uh, today we will be discussing the Network Director Zero Touch Provisioning Learning Byte. Okay, so let's, uh, let's discuss what Zero Touch Provisioning is, or also an, an acronym for it is ZTP. And what we do here is basically you connect a switch that has the default configuration to the network and that switch is upgraded or downgraded and a configuration is added. Now with this thing I want to point out now is this is ZTP outside of Network Director. In the next slide we'll talk about that value that Network Director brings to the table with zero touch provisioning. And that biggest value is that when you're doing it outside of Network Director it's a very complex pre-configuration of the DHCP server. And then we also need to pre-configure the file server that's going to hold the Junos image and configuration file. That's not too difficult. And with that we can use HTTP, FTP, or TFTP. Okay, so let's talk about what happens when Network Director is added. The first thing that Network Director does, and the most important thing in my opinion, is that it automatically provisions the DHCP server. It takes the most difficult part of ZTP and does it for you automatically. This is cool, we'll see this shortly. Okay, so then uh, it also places the configuration files and the Junos images on the file server. Then that ZTP process occurs of, you know, the switch, it contacts the DHCP server. The DHCP server responds with certain DHCP options that tells it what tells the switch what to do tells it where to uh, find the Junos OS image tells it uh, where to find the configuration files and gives it instructions basically of how to you know get on the correct version of code and get the correct configuration file and then after that happens after the ZTP process is complete the switch is automatically added to the list of managed devices with Network Director so you don't even have to go through device discovery that part happens automatically and then there are this is support for their support for, with this and network director for EX and QFX switches. So let's jump to the uh, actual GUI here. And the first thing we're going to notice here is that we're in the deploy mode. You can see that up here, deploy mode, image management, manage image image repository. This is where where we are going to put the image uh, the Junos OS image files that we're going to use with uh, zero touch provisioning. See here we have uh, for the EX3200, 12.3R5.7 and 12.3R6.6. So let's actually jump to the CLI. So with this we can see first that we do have an EX3200 switch. The model is EX3200-24T. That's going to be important. We are running 12.3R5.7 and then with the DHCP server and file server that service is, is uh, in this example, within one server. So you can see that we're in the TFTP boot directory. Examine that. There's nothing in there. That's okay right now. And then the, another thing to keep in mind here, I want to point out, is you need to make sure that the DHCPD service is restartable. Because what's going to happen is Network Directors is going to come in here, try to restart DHCPD. If it can't do that, zero touch provisioning will fail. So keep that in mind. So let's check that status first. see it's running but we need to make sure it's restartable it is that's great if it wasn't we would look into this further and the thing to keep in mind here is to, to make sure that this is restartable you need to at least add a little bit of configuration to the DHCPD comp file and we can see that here We can see we have the subnet and the netmask added. Now I'm running uh, CentOS uh, 6 something, and so that's all we need for this. With your deployment, it may be totally, totally different than what you actually have to have. With this, it's just the subnet and the netmask. So keep that in mind as you're doing this. 
and then the other service we're going to be using is the I, or the uh, X INET D service because we're using TFTP. See it's running. Let's make sure it's restartable as well. And it is. We stopped it, restarted. So we're good there. Everything's fine as that's concerned. So let's configure zero touch provisioning. We're going to set up ZTP. We're going to call the ZTP LB for learning byte. We're going to specify CentOS. Now you can specify Ubuntu or other. Now, if you do other, you can only manually configure the DHCP server. Now, to me, the biggest benefit is the automatic configuration of the DHCP server. So let's do that. We need to Actually, this is the IP address of the DHCP server. And then the DHCP user. This user has to be able to uh, restart the DHCPD service and then configure that DHCP.com file, as long as he has those permissions. OK, we enter the password for that. Configure a DHCP server. It's the same IP address specifying the directory for TFTP and then what it's it's going to do here it's going to validate those DHCP credentials and did that we're okay it has access to the DHCP server and here we're specifying the uh, ZTP devices root user password now this is the password that ZTP or excuse me network director is going to use to do that automatic discovery after ZTP finishes so you need, need to make sure whatever configuration file you're adding to those switches has this as the root password. Okay, we're going to add device model. Now keep this in mind. We specified this earlier that we checked out that we had EX3200-24T. That's very important because what happens here is this line is put into the DHCP dot or DHCPD.com file, and then when this switch comes online, it's going to pass. You know, it's it's going to send out a DHCP uh, discovery message with the actual model information in there and so the DHCP uh, server is going to look through its configuration find that model number for that family and then pass out that information okay we're going to select the actual image file we're going to upgrade to 12.3 r6.6 remember we were on 12.3 r5.7 and then we have to upload a configuration here and with this this is going to have some special things and I'll talk about that in a second And so we're going to pick the file, going to upload it, and we're not going to look at this specific file, but there's a few things I want to check out in the default configuration file. This is going to have some important information. First of all, we have this event options, and what this is, this event option is going to add a policy that raises a trap whenever the when the switch comes online, because that's how network director is going to find the switch. The switch is going to send a trap to network director, an SNMP, SNMP trap, and network director is going to find it that way. Then at the very bottom, let's take check out SNMP. We have uh, the community of public, and then we have, now this is the part that's important. The community really is important, but this is what's important. We need to actually configure this part right here, this trap group, because with this trap group, it's going to have some special things in it. This is what we're going to send. And I want to point out this ND port for the destination port. This is not actual code. If you try to enter this in the CLI, it'll air out. But you have to enter it this way in your configuration file that you're uploading. Because what's going to happen is network director is going to replace that with whatever destination port that it's going to be listening on. And then the same thing down here, ND IP, so the network director IP. This is going to, you need to enter that just like that where it says ND IP. Because network director is going to replace that with its actual, the, the IP address of the Ethernet Zero interface. Okay, so after that we're going to specify an IP address, say dot one twenty at the end. This is the IP address that we're going to hand out to that switch. Okay, then we can look over our configuration, click the finish, and we create the job. Now something you want to do here is you want to look at the actual job. We're going to go to system, manage jobs. We're going to find this network director job, which is right here. Or excuse me, where is that? Here it is, right here. See, it's in progress. If this fails, it'll never work. And so just keep this in mind. If, if this doesn't fail, or if it does fail, you will not know that it. this is the only place that you'll see that it fails. So we'll wait for this to continue. I'll pause the video because this does take a little bit of time. Okay, we can see that uh, the job did complete successfully. No problems there. 
So let's jump back to the logical view. We're going to go to deploy mode, zero touch provisioning, and we're going to monitor zero touch provisioning. We see our ZTP profile here. And when we actually do have uh, the switch come online, we'll see it added here. Okay, so let's zeroize that switch. Here's the switch now. So we'll put that on that default configuration. And as we do that, we're going to monitor the DHCP uh, uh, interactions. The TCP dump command. port 67 for that. So we want to use the verbose as well. So we'll let that switch do that. I'm going to pause the video since this does take a little while. Alright, so the switch has rebooted all the way and has contacted the DHCP server. And you can see in the actual output that of this occurring. We can see that the different options being used. Uh, we can see the actual IP address being used. We selected that 120 IP address. And so there's there's a bunch of options in here, and also I want to point out this uh, Juniper EX32024T. That was that field we set. And before we move on, I do want to show the the DHCP comp file. You can see it's changed drastically. You see all this right here. All this stuff is added new. It tells you know we have the the clients we're looking for. Uh, the the address we're going to be handing out transfer mode TFTP uh, the 150 option which is the file server you know this network director did all of this for us and then we look at the actual EX switch let's log in see that we're on 12.3 or 6.6 let's do a show version to confirm that yeah we can see we're, we've upgraded correctly and we can see that actual Hostname changed too. It used to be ex1, ex-1. Now it's ex-baseline. That's part of the new config. And if we jump to network directory, we can actually see in the ZTP profile that it's added. You know, we have everything we need in here. Discover devices, uh, discovery time, boot time of the switch. We can actually view the config, see the OS version, the address it's using. You know, this is not just to be used on one switch. We're using one switch in this example, but with this, we we could actually use it on hundreds of switches possibly really simplified deployment and then last but not least if we go to build mode we can see that the switch is actually managed by network director and that really simplifies the process for you this is how zero touch provisioning works how network director can do that for us alright so that brings us to the end of this learning bite we talked about zero touch provisioning network director talked about how zero touch provisioning works and how network director brings value to zero touch provisioning and can help automate that make that easy for you and so that that brings us to the end, end of the learning bite and so as always i hope this is, will be helpful to you and thanks for watching visit the juniper education services website to learn more about courses view our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses, learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths, Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence, and the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.